So welcome, in this video we're going to be talking about the first stage of the labour and especially we're going to be talking about the clinical management as well as the clinical course. And you can also visit us at Royal Press College on Instagram and both on YouTube. So first stage of labour is usually just defined as a preparation of the birth canal. Now the normal duration is of a primary gravida is around 20 hours which means a first time pregnancy with an average of 8.6 hours and 14 hours for a multipara the average of 5.3 hours meaning that they have multiple gestations. Now the main events of the first stage of labour can be split into three different areas. First dilation, second effacement of the cervix and a full formation of the lower uterine segment. Let's go on to talk about what is effacement and what is in dilation and the mechanisms and the theories behind what causes this. So an effacement is usually defined as it is a gradual thinning of the cervix which allows for the muscles to easy passage of the baby. It is a process by which muscle fibers of the cervix are pulled upwards and merges with the fibers of the lower uterine segment. Now what about what is dilation? It is simply in simple terms it is put as the opening of the external os of the cervix. Now both of these terms are usually defined in terms of increments. Usually as effacement is mentioned in percentages as well as um, dilation in centimeters. Now the pathophysiology of dilation can be split into uterine contractions and retractions. This is the longitudinal muscle fibers of the upper segment attached to circular muscle fibers of the lower segment and the upper part of the cervix. Thus with each contraction not only are the canal is opened from above and downward but it also becomes shortened and retracted. So whilst the upper segment contracts and retracts and pushes the fetus the lower segment of the cervix dilates in response to the force of the contraction of the upper segment, leading to an overall dilation. What about the second theory, fetal axis pressure? Here there are strong contractions of the force, which is transmitted through the fetal podalic pore of the vertebral column directly into the fetal head. This causes a mechanical stretching of the lower pore and opening leading to dilation of the cervical canal. Now the third theory usually goes on to talk about what's known as a bag of membrane. Bag of membrane is basically what the humans usually say when they have a rupture of their waters. Now there are two anatomical things you need to know of. Four waters. The four water is a small amount of fluid or liquor that usually, liquor meaning amnion, which usually is found at the top of the head of the baby. And the hind water, on the other hand, is usually above the head in contact with the girdle as in the rest of the body. Now, with each uterine contraction, there is a hydrostatic pressure which is generated in the forewater that in turn causes further dilation of the cervical canal like a wedge. Finally, there is a theory known as a vissa terrigo, which is simply known as the dilation of retraction of the cervix is achieved by a downward thrust of the presenting part of the fetus, leading to an upward pull of the cervix of the lower segment. Let's talk about how the clinical symptoms come about. Usually there is intermittent painful uterine contractions and the woman usually feels the pain more simultaneously in the anterior front part of the thigh and the lower abdomen. Initially the pains are usually between 15 to 30 minutes with a duration of around 30 seconds and in late first stage it usually decreases to 3 to 5 minutes with about duration increase to 45 seconds. So remember from this video, cervical dilation so far you, your understanding is Cervical dilation relates to the dilation of the external horse measured in centimeters and usually the key point here is by the end of first stage it's usually dilated of 10 centimeters whereas effacement is determined by the length of the cervical canal and the vagina. Now they, these both can be split into a latent phase as well as an active phase. In latent phase is 8 hours usually and the maximum dilation of 6 centimeters. This is the period between the onset of the true labor pain and onset between the cervical dilation. Active phase is usually 5 hours and speeds up. It's further split into acceleration, maximum speed and deacceleration. You can find on screen the different types of centimeters of dilation that takes place in each of these segments. What about the status of the membrane? This is basically meaning if there's an early rupture, it means it happens before the dilation of the cervix. And if there's a late rupture or there's a rupture or premature rupture, this usually means before directly onset of the labor. Now, what is the management or changes that you may see during monitoring? The maternal heart rate is usually increased by 10 to 15 beats per minute during each contraction. Maternal blood pressure, systolic blood pressure especially, is raised by about 10 gra uh, mercury grams 
and here there's also a fetal heart rate usually decreases by 10 to 20 beats per minute but it usually returns back to normal of around 140. What is the management? Non-interference with vouchful expectancy so as to prepare the patient for natural birth is usually the number one goal. Two is to monitor carefully the progress of the labour, maternal conditions as well as fetal behaviour so such things include fetal heart rate as well as the fetal behaviour. And finally the assessment of the progress of the labour and paratograph recording with abdominal palpitations in needed is usually the first basic management of the first stage of labour.